There are three main groups of elevators, the Couplands, Warwick James and Criers. Couplands are straight and come in three different sizes. They are originally used as chisels, hence the shape. Warwick James elevators have three variations, right, left and straight. Right and left have curves in them similar to a hockey stick. The straight would normally be used in a similar fashion to a Luxator. Cryer's elevators are sharp angled elevators with two variations, right and left. Which elevator is used depends on the clinical situation and operator preference. Elevators have three components, a handle, shank and blade. The elevator should be held in the palm of your hand, with your index finger extending down the shank for additional control. Elevators work on three basic principles, wedging, leverage and wheel and axle. Wedging is when the blade is introduced into the periodontal space down the long axis of the tooth between the bone and tooth. In a similar fashion to luxators, this separates the periodontal ligaments, allowing for mobilisation of the tooth and delivery with forceps. Leverage is used when the elevator is applied perpendicular to the long axis of the tooth and rotated about the alveolar bone, acting as the fulcrum, resulting in the tooth being displaced axially. Once sufficient mobility is achieved, the tooth can be delivered with forceps. Caution must be taken not to use the adjacent tooth as the fulcrum, as this risks unnecessary damage to that tooth. The wheel and axle principle is commonly used with cryers elevators to remove retained roots. The sharp blade engages the retained roots and they are carefully rotated out of the socket. This is very useful in multi-rooted teeth where a root may have fractured during an extraction and the cryers can be used to break the interceptal bone to gain a purchase point for elevation of the fractured root. Care must be taken when using elevators to ensure correct force application to prevent slipping and protect soft tissues.